This short video tutorial is for those guys who have just installed Mathematica on their machine and are about to open it up for the first time. So, if you double click the shortcut for Mathematica on your desktop, you will be welcome with this screen. So, let us see what you can get from this screen. On the left most panel, this one you see a number of entries over here, and this represents the recent files, which let you access to any of them very quickly by clicking it on, without going into the directory or to the folder where they are saved. On the other hand, at the top there exists an option for opening a new document along with a drop down menu. Try to play with every of these options and see what Mathematica offers you, but I would like to take you to the new mode book. However, if you are not interested to see this screen, the next time you open up Mathematica, you can stop this from appearing by just unchecking this box. So let's move to the new notebook. If I click this button, this window is called Mathematica Notebook. This window is called Mathematica Notebook and this is the place where you write your program and interact with the kernel of Mathematica. The actual boss they do everything at the back of this window within the machine. If you look at the upper left corner you will see Untitled 1 over here. This is the name of the file. If you want to save this with another name in a specified directory, we just need to press the Ctrl and S button simultaneously or go to File menu and click on the Save option. You will be taken to a directory. From here you can save, you can give the directory where you want to save and here you can put the name which you want for your file. At the moment I would like to at the moment, I would like to save this to the desktop, so I'm, I'm clicking on the desktop and give the name demo to it. If I click save, the file will be saved and you will see that the, the name untitled one changed to demo now. Now let us work in this file. I have already generated the program and would like to go through it step by step and will explain what each operation means. It may seem very trivial for the experts but will of course help the beginners. Since in Mathematica we deal with mathematical operations, therefore it is important to know about the arithmetic operators first. I have already generated the program for understanding these operations, but we'll try to go through it step by step and we'll try to understand how to use these simple operators in designing or creating a complex program for dealing with complex problems. So the first thing is to know how to add and subtract two numbers. To add two numbers, you just need to put a plus sign between them from the plus key of the keyboard and then run the cell. In order to run this cell, you need to press the shift and enter key simultaneously or the enter key of numeric keyboard to evaluate the cell. So by default, by evaluating every cell, Mathematica always show this suggestion bar which is which for me it is sometimes irritating and you can switch this by going to edit tab and then to preference and just by unchecking this box show suggestion bar after last output if i switch that up it will not be shown anymore i want to cancel it out in a similar fashion, you can subtract two number by putting the minus sign and the minus sign is usually inserted by the dash button on your keyboard. So that gives me four. The multiplication of two number is carried by putting the steric between them or 
just by adding a space for example here I write a space in the space perform the same operation as the steric symbol does the division is carried by putting forward slash between the two numbers so if I run this cell I get 6 divided by 3 obviously 52 the power of a number the power of a number or any variable is written by putting this upside symbol and if I run this one it will deal with 36 different types of brackets has different purposes and different meaning in mathematica the square brackets are the square brackets are used for defining argument of a function for example if i want to write exponent x then i have to include the x within the square brackets and if i run this cell i'll get exponent x Similarly, the parentheses are used to group up different elements within an expression. For example, here I want to group up these three elements together and then divide it by 2. So it makes 14 and 14 divided by 2 and give me 7. Similarly, I want to group up these three elements in the numerator, in these two elements, in the denominator. And if I run this out, it will be 14 divided by 7, which gives me 2. On the other hand, if I remove these brackets and carry the operation this way, this, this expression means that we are dividing 14 with 2 and the result is this, then added to 5. If I run this out, I'll get 12. 7 plus 5 make it 12. Similarly, I can group up different elements in the power of a number or an expression by enclosing them into parentheses. This expression then means that I am finding the square root of 4 which is equal to 2. The curly breakers in Mathematica are used for describing a list. In order to get more information about a list, I would suggest you to watch my video in this playlist named Less Matrices and Table in Mathematica with Arithmetic. Remember, you can add up comments at any position in your file by enclosing it inside the bracket followed by steric and steric followed by bracket. Anything written in this form are left unattended by Mathematica. The multiplication of matrices is carried by putting another operator, the dot, between them. You see over here, this is, I'm putting a dot between matrix. Here I'm defining matrix, which is a 2 plus 2 matrix. If I run this out and want to see whether it is a 2 plus 2 matrix or not, you can see it is a 2 plus 2 matrix with 2 rows, 2 columns. And if I multiplied the same matrix with itself, I get a 2 plus 2 matrix. If you carry this operation manually, you will obviously end with this matrix. So the matrix multiplication is carried by putting a dot between the two matrices, unlike the steric, which we put over here between two numbers. One thing more, Mathematica knows about different physical constant and you can recall the value of a constant by using the entity command. If you write down the entity command and enclose this thing within the inverted commas, physical constant followed by a comma in the name of the physical constant which here I'm writing gravitational constant followed by its values if I run this command it will give me the universal gravitational constant which is 6.674 into 10 raised to power minus 11 with units meter cube per kilogram per meter second square However, if you are not interested in the unit and only want to know about the numerical value, you can use this additional command which is called the part command and can run the same, the same to get the numerical value here. If you compare now, if you look at this, the unit has been removed and only the 
numerical value of the gravitational constant is produced. Similarly, if I want to know about the value of the speed of light, I have to write at this position the speed of light. If I run this out, I'll get the speed of light with its unit meter per second. 